supposed to hear too. Yeah, I don't want to complain though because it's been raining a heck of a lot. Where are you calling from? Banff. Banff. Yeah, I'll show you the view. Ugh. Oh, you, you have the best window, too. I know. I know. Holy smokes. Yeah, that's Cascade. Nice. Okay, so welcome to the Zoom land sup with me number three, everybody. Uh, this is a really, really great phone call. Uh, the whole point of this series has been just to connect with uh, people we know, people we don't know, people we know a little bit, um, and to connect each other across the country as well. So uh, I think this is a, a super fun group of humans. So we have Renalta, Colin, Joseph, and Rodrigo. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. That's amazing. Um, so whole point of these things is just a super casual call to get to know each other a little bit. Um, uh, we can delve into just about whatever we want to. I have uh, a few questions that, uh, that we sent out ahead of time that I might uh, send to folks uh, as we go, but you know, uh, whatever whatever people feel like uh, chatting about today is is all fair game. Uh, great humans talking about great things. So um, we love to start by uh, just sort of breaking a little bit of bread and going uh, uh, around the Zoom room, as it were, and uh, maybe just uh, give ourselves a, a bit of an introduction. Uh, tell us uh, uh, what lands you're you're calling from or call home, and uh, uh, and what are you eating? Is because uh, I'm all about the food, so I love to see what people <laughs> bring to the table. And some people have brought is some some of these have been boozy days. Some of them have not. It's been all kinds of different things. So my, mine today, I'm calling from Treaty 6, uh, you know, just outside of Saskatoon is where my little farm is. I was born and raised on Treaty 4, but I've spent most of my career in Treaty 6 in the homeland of the Métis. Um, and uh, I've gone fairly simple. We're all about what we're picking today. So uh, our, our little farm exploded with wild mint this year. So we've oh. picked and harvested a ton of wild mint. Um, and, uh, and I mix it with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of muskeg tea and it's, uh, my, my favorite thing these days. And then I have a little bowl of Saskatoon berries that, uh, our wee family went and picked on the weekend. So that's, uh, that's me and that's where I'm calling from. Why don't we, uh, uh Renalta, do you want to jump in next? Oh, sure. Uh, I come to you, um, uh, Titu Atera Renelta Arluk. I'm originally from the Northwest Territories. Um, my mother is Denis Huslene and Cree, and my father is Anubiali Wichbuchen from the Anubika Klavik region, and then my mother's from Hood Buffalo region, Fort Chippewan, Fort Smith region. And I come to you from Treaty 7 territory uh, in Banff, Alberta. So I um, I ha I'm on keto again, so I have some beautiful avocado with balsamic vinegar, and then I have, this is Akbik, which is uh, my Inuit name for the cloudberry, and I have Akbik uh, soda with a little bit of syrup, so that's what I'm drinking. Super fun. This is already good food. I love it. Rodrigo, <laughs> where are you coming from there? Hey guys, um, I am calling from Treaty 1, uh, Winnipeg, uh, where I'm, I've been living since um, uh, October. Um, I was born and raised in Brazil, and I moved to uh, Winnipeg um, 19 years ago this August, and then I went to England for a while, and then I went to Stratford, where I was the last four years, and then now I've, I'm, I'm back in Winnipeg, uh, where I'm the AD of Shakespeare in the Ruins. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've been here for, uh, since, uh, since, uh, since last fall. And uh, I am eating a taco salad. Very good. Some <laughs> avocado. Some, a lot of stuff mixed in there. It's really good. Um, and I'm drinking my favorite drink, which is just uh, Campari with ice. Just Ooh. the Italian. It's very disgusting, but I love it. And uh, it's very bitter and very sweet. And um, mm. and um, like my soul, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's that's where I'm at right now. Awesome, thanks so much. And uh, uh, Colin, why don't we jump over to you there? Uh, hi, uh, I'm Colin Wolf. Um, I am from Treaty Seven. I was born and raised in Calgary. Uh, my family's from Lac La Biche, though, or my mom's side is from Lac La Biche in northern Alberta. Uh, my dad's side is Scottish from Scotland. 
Um, they're Dingwalls. Uh, you can Google that if you want. Um, we have a little castle. Not, we don't own it, but you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> have you ever been to it? No, never been to it. It's too far north. We've been to the town of Dingwall in um, uh, uh, the Maritimes, but we haven't been to the Dingwall in Scotland. It's too far. Um, I have with me uh, an orange to eat that's already peeled, and I have some uh, leftover pistachios Ooh. to drink. I have some Bengal spice tea. I would have had nicer things, but we just got back from camping on Sunday, and so <laughs> we have nothing to eat except for fruit and nuts. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I'm really, really excited to be here. Oh, and I'm coming from currently, I'm currently coming from Whitehorse. I'm the artistic director of Guandac Theater. Uh, and we are on the traditional territory of the Ta'an, of the Kwanlin Dun First Nation and the Ta'an Kwachin Council. Very good. And, and is, that, is that unceded territory? Uh, it's complicated. Uh, well, no, not unceded. So there's new treaties up here. So there's there's new agreements that they've signed between the government and the um, uh, uh, First Nation governments. Um, and so they're kind of different. I'm still learning about them as well. I recommend, um, not live, but whoever is watching, to Google the Yukon Umbrella Agreements. Um, and there's all sorts of politics around some nations did do agreements with new government formats and some nations did not. And so there's all sorts of stuff there. But um, it was unseated until the new agreements have been signed. I don't want to call them treaties because I don't know if that's the right term. I'll say agreement. Um, yeah. So Google it. <laughs> good. Very good. Thanks, Colin. Uh, Joseph, how are you and where are you calling from? Calling from uh, Saskatoon <clears throat> or Saskatoon, Saskatoon, very bushland. And uh, Treaty 6, uh, Treaty Number 444, and uh, I'm, uh, I guess, what was the last question there? Just uh, what, you, what are you eating, right? Yeah, what are you eating? What are you stuffing your face with? <laughs> <laughs> I got a nice bowl here, so I got a nice bowl. Mm. And it's got a cabbage sauerkraut. Oh. Made by my sister and friend and collaborator, Cheryl LaRondell. So she's watching over my health. And this is my choice. And then this is something <laughs> cheesies. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I got some medicinal tea here. And uh, <clears throat> this tea is uh, what we call COVID tea. So it's got a little bit of a uh, rat root and it's got beer root. So it's got two, mm. two root, strong root medicine. So this is a, it's kind of emptying out. So it's almost done. I'm almost finished my uh, prescription from my sister, Yvonne from One Arrow. I have some uh, ginger matcha latte here. Ginger matcha latte, green tea. So I got some. Uh, I usually have that. I have mint. I just picked mint a few days ago, so I have fresh mint. I haven't uh, mixed it with anything. Sometimes I'll put mint into a bottle of water and just let it sit. And when I go out medicine picking, I just drink from that. Now, this is a chicken soup that I just concocted here because I didn't have any vegetables. So I threw some noodles in there. I think noodles are vegetable, right? <laughs> They're <very much funny. laughs> they come from the earth. And I got chicken in there. This was also made by my a friend of mine who uh, mm. used organic chicken. So organic chicken and organic everything, you know. So he said, you better eat it right away because it'll spoil. So I, I made it a chick. It's a, a real chicken noodle soup because it's got chicken, mm. got the broth, and it's got noodles, vermicelli and a little bit of pepper. So those are <laughs> things that I have. <laughs> so I'm from, yeah, I'm from Saskatoon. It's a good place awesome. to start, right? <laughs> you betcha. Um, thanks everybody. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna jump straight in here. Uh, I'm gonna go to the big one um, and, and see what we have to talk about. But a uh, lot going on in the world, a uh, lot going on in, in Canadian theater. A um, lot going on in Saskatoon theater. Um, so, you know, I, I think I'm just kind of curious with um, 
there's a, a lot of really in-depth conversations that I that are happening. Um, maybe the best way to put it is in a wider circle than they were happening. Um, uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, systemic racism, toxic environments, uh, power hierarchies, you know, all those kinds of things. And it's such a, for me anyway, such a, a wonderful opportunity to be called out and a wonderful opportunity to be uh, have these conversations really, really rise in priority in a lot of places that, frankly, they weren't priority. Um, uh, and that's something really interesting and valuable for us that we're trying to take that opportunity as much as possible. So um, uh, I, I'm, I'm curious about, you know, who are you following in the world? Who are you watching uh, who's having these conversations or who do you see out there who's adding something interesting to these conversations that, that you're, you're paying attention to and, uh, and why? Um, and just to put somebody on the hot spot, uh, Colin. <laughs> you can pass if you want. <laughs> um, yeah, I can, I can go first. Um, I typed up some responses yesterday, so I'd be a little prepared, so I'll just skim through that too. Um, so uh, I think this is, this is a weird question a little bit for me, um, because uh, I'm in the middle of like uh, trying to be off social media a little bit, because like, I think it's, I think it's bad for us. Um, but like, um, I, I think we don't need to do it all on social media. If you can read a book, there are books. Um, some examples are Until We Are Free. Um, which is a collection of essays about Black Lives Matter in um, Canada, Inconvenient Indian, Two Spirit Acts, Medicine Shows. You can watch these panels. There's a Calgary panel that was done recently. Paprika did a panel. Um, Gwandak did a panel. You also need to listen to the music. This is Black people, Indigenous people. Uh, there's a great Northern Bars playlist you should listen to. Like, um, this is the thing is that you need to consume more than just our, like, typed out rhetoric you also need to like consume our art and show up for our plays and show up for our ceremonies and show up for our piece like you need to do all those things and it's a little more than just who you're following on social media that said um gets derange uh gets crazy boy he's always posting really challenging stuff um out of southern alberta that uh, uh is always really making me think um it's not Black Lives Matter, but it's Saskatchewan relevant. Tristan DeRocher is um, doing a walk and hunger strike in Saskatch Saskatchewan right now. Um, I just found out about uh, uh, him a few days ago and this work. Um, it's, it's, I've just started following it, but he's really talking about um, moving the conversation around um, children who are young, young people who are committing suicide from how do we save our children to how do we help the children. And I'm really, really inspired by what he's saying. Um, you should follow my sister, Kaylee Crow. Uh, the theater scene has really let her down in Canada and her words have always guided my actions. So if you like me, you will like her more. Um, mm. The general manager here at Wondak Theater is also a superstar. Her name is Paige Gillette. You should follow her. She is a contributor to the book Until We Are Free, um, which is those reflections on Black Lives Matter in Canada. Um, those are all my people to follow. Um, and as far as why, like, I don't know, like we need to follow some kids. We need to follow some older people. We need to follow some people we don't agree with. Like um, there's not going to be a, the one person to follow who's going to tell you the one answer that will solve this for you. Um, and I don't mean you, I don't mean you, I mean the royal you. I'll say us instead. There's not going to be one person who's going to solve this for us. Uh, <laughs> it's going to take hearing a lot of people's opinions. It's going to take hearing uh, all the all the people that we've excluded, that we've ignored, who, who, who left because we hurt them too bad. Like, you know, so I'm really thinking about like, instead of just following like the 10 best activists in the country, yeah, because we can find those, right? You can probably, you can find them, right? Like, I'm not even going to name it. Because <laughs> um, uh, uh, I think you need, I think we need to be finding people who are kind of outside of our circles, and outside of our opinions. And Facebook isn't conducive to that. Facebook actually tries to, to isolate you and insulate you and, and create an echo chamber, which is why I really think that, like, sure, follow the right social media accounts, follow the right Twitters, but everything on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, etc., is for capitalists to make money. And so they can find out what we want to buy, what we want to do, and how we want to do it, so they can figure out what to sell us. Like, that's what social media is for. We use it for connection. We use it for communication. It is for capitalists to make money. I think that's all I have to say about that. 
That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. Can, can I ask you one one follow up question? Maybe that's a bit off the. Um, I, I'm curious. Is there is there somebody in the community that you're there learning about now in Whitehorse, and um, which is a new community for you, if I'm understanding right? Um, is, is there somebody? I know you guys have been having tons of conversations and doing some digital stuff and all kinds of different things. Is is there somebody that you've come across in that community that is is inspiring you? Yeah, um, uh, uh, Siku Alulu, uh, who's on our board, she is also really incredible in her, um, she's really tied to the community here and she's currently going through, uh, uh, she witnessed some RCMP violence um, and she's doing a lot of great work up here. She's really worth following. Um, it's like everyone who works at the Yukon First Nations Tourism and Culture, I've been following them. Uh, um, um, Katie, oh, I'm blanking on her last name right now. Um, Katie Johnson. Like, Katie Johnson, thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say more, but I know that's wrong. Um, Katie Johnson. Um, yeah, like le like Leonard Monk, Christine Genier has been doing a lot of stuff at CBC. Uh, 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 I should definitely, you should all definitely Google Christine Genier and what's been going on at CBC up here. Um, I'm not gonna tell you anything. You guys just have to do the work yourself. <laughs> um, so Google that. Um, uh, uh, I also recommend um, searching Northern Voices Rising, which is a small group I'm part of, um, and we're a group of cutie BIPOCs, um, so queer and trans and indigenous people and black people of color. Um, we're organizing in the North, um, many diverse voices there, including like rural mixed people, uh, uh, new to the Yukon people, Yukon indigenous people, all sorts of stuff. So definitely um, Northern Voices Rising, follow them for a, a great Northern activist perspective. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's some, some more stuff. Thanks, Colin. Um, why don't we jump over to uh, Rodrigo? And I, and I think Colin's got a great note there. Don't feel like you have to say to social media. Uh, I think he's got some really great stuff to say about social media mm -hmm. as well. And that's that's all very true. So, um, you know, feel free to diverge from from the social media land too. No, that was that was an amazing uh, response, Colin. My God, that was great. I, I, I agree. I think um, I spent before... I, uh, <laughs> Like five years ago, I was uh, marketing and um, working in social media marketing with a local arts group. And um, so I am deep into the social media kind of like madness. And it really is driving us all a bit, a bit, uh, a bit mad right now. There's a lot of noise and a lot of confusion and a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of anger. A lot of it justified, a lot of it for sure is, 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 is real, um, um, a long time coming. But there's also a lot of, uh, people just um, just really angry and, and sad and I've been um, thinking a lot about my relationship with social media and how to, uh, how to protect my mental health as well um, as I navigate this, this sea of, of noise that is the, uh, the internet. Um, I've, been, um, I've been thinking a lot about um, lately what's happening in Brazil, my homeland, um, with indigenous peoples in Brazil and the current government in Brazil pushing um, uh, indigenous peoples out of their out of their uh, uh, lands, and a lot of it's a lot of the devastation that the pandemic and the far right government um, um, are causing in Brazil now is is really tragic. My parents are both uh, frontline workers, uh, physicians, and I'm I'm following my parents a lot in terms of what they're working, you know, with in Brazil and how devastating it is to see um, a country descend into complete mayhem. And, and, and just tragic, the numbers are, 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 are really, really tragic in Brazil. Um, other than that, and, and so following a lot of uh, uh, journalists, they're doing a lot of great work in Brazil. Um, I'm following um, uh, my friend E.B. Smith, doing a lot of heavy lifting, um, you know, from with the Black Caucus in Stratford, because I spent four years there. And they formed a black caucus with the artists uh, of color and um, and uh, from the Stratford Festival, and they're doing tremendous work. Um, EB is working a lot with Ghost Light, an online platform, creating a lot of awareness, doing a lot of mentorship, doing a lot of workshops online, and I'm certainly learning a lot as a newcomer in this country. You know, I, I thought a lot about the citizenship test I took five years ago, and how tragically uh, little to nothing, it included in terms of indigenous voices or indigenous history and how um, it's been thinking a lot about the past and my relationship as a newcomer and, um, and as um, a new Canadian and whatever that means. Um, 
and uh, E.B. Smith has been doing a lot of great work. Uh, and I've been also thinking as a Shakespearean company, I've been following a lot of what the other Shakespearean companies around the country are doing in the world, how they're responding to this as a, as a Shakespeare centric company. There's a lot about, um, you know, we have to think a lot about what to do with this mandate to produce this dead, very dead, very white playwright and how to expand on that. So I'm following all the Shakespearean companies across the country and what they're doing to innovate, to expand their mandates, to be more inclusive, to be more aware of the moment. Um, I love uh, following Sam White. She is uh, the AD of uh, Shakespeare uh, uh, Company in Detroit. And she's doing a lot of great uh, work with uh, um, um, uh, youth in Detroit in educational and outreach work. Um, and um, I'm really, I'm just very fast. And also we had, a, we had a round table with all the seven packed ADs here in Winnipeg about a month or so ago. And uh, the seven ADs and 10 BIPOC artists uh, were in a conversation with each other while 300 members of the community watched. And it was a fascinating process. And um, it was um, um, a, a difficult first step into engaging some action in terms of how to be a better community and how to take care of each other more and how to be more um, uh, inclusive and and aware. Um, I just started my AD ship last year and I haven't programmed the season yet. And I've had a pandemic and I've had a complete, you know, social revolution. I think it's fantastic. And, um, and I feel my brain stretched and my heart stretched in all directions. Um, and one good thing uh, out of this pandemic um, has been that I'm able to connect with people like people here right now and to become more aware of what's happening across the country and across the world as opposed to um, being so fixated in our, my day-to-day -day, you know um, um, habits so this idea of breaking habits has been fantastic so I'm thinking I'm following a lot of things and my answer is completely rambling right now but I feel, uh, I feel like I'm connecting a lot with my deep past, where I come from, and I hadn't thought about Brazil and indigenous rights in Brazil for a long time. And what's happening down there is really shocking me. And I'm thinking about my role as a new Canadian here, and I'm thinking and following a lot of, a lot of Shakespearean companies right now and what they're gonna do about improving our, our uh, mandate to just be better, really, and expanding. Thanks, Rodrigo. That's some great thoughts. Thank you. Uh, Renalta, you want to jump in? Sure, I'll jump in. I was, um, thank you. Like, these are beautiful sharings. I, I, um, uh, I kind of follow um, Jesse Wente, Ryan McMahon, uh, CBC Indigenous. I kind of, I think I do a little bit of more of the high level kind of, um, watching uh, what's happening nationally rather than digging into like these smaller uh, uh, pockets and um, some of the stuff that I've been engaging in is looking at um, not so much our perspective but what's been what's been feeling felt so like right white fragility and like you know, um, how can we have these conversations in ways that can kind of help alleviate the stress so that we can actually start becoming, so we can start communicating with each other. And I think that that probably comes the fact that I work at the BAM Center. And so I'm already in those conversations on a regular basis. Um, some of the more incredible uh, things that I've been witnessing is you know i think today was fully announced that edmonton ease have dropped their name their racist name so mm -hmm. i i think about that i think about the washington football team has dropped their racist name and you know these are conversations that we've been having in the community for like i feel like decades that these are inappropriate names these names should change but because of black lives matter and because of the disruption that they're creating in, in across the country, across North America, that because of that rippling, 
it, it, it that change impacts all of us not you know not just black black lives matter it 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 brings up indigenous lives matter it brings up all these um it it invigorates and activates us to to be part of the change and i'm grateful a lot for the pandemic that it has helped climate change alleviate, that it's helped us connect more. Like I haven't traveled uh, at all and I've been able to hang out with my family for four months. And that isn't always a, not, like I'm usually on the road doing quite a bit of work. And so really valuing that and, and that, that incubation has allowed this disruption and this eruption of voice, the necessary need for voice. and. And I'm really grateful for that. So I'm following movements and I'm following conversations. I'm not specifically following um, certain voices because I think we're all sharing the same need, which is we need to be part of the conversations. You know, uh, we need to change the systems. The systems aren't working and that's why they're crumbling now. And if they don't shift with these new voices, they will stay pre-COVID and they won't make post-COVID. Uh, some of the beautiful things that um, on social media that I am following that I really love is I'm seeing um, how art is transforming and continuing to thrive within this. So I, I've been following Casey Adams. She's a beautiful um, uh, Indigenous artist who lives in Winnipeg. She does clay work. Uh, so she's been, some of the stuff she's been working on is she's been digging clay, harvesting, uh, finding clay, and she's been making these beautiful pots. And then she's been cooking food in those pots. And so I've been kind of following her journey of like on the land engagement. Uh, someone else that is like, uh, I really love and value is Santi Smith. And so Santi Smith has been making masks. And uh, so you'll see, um, you know, we'll be wearing um, masks of uh, Indigenous people have been making these masks and, and she's been making some really beautiful ones and, and that even during this time that the artist within us needs to create. And I think that being able to incubate at home has been able to create some beautiful pieces. So when I get a little tired of um, watching oppression and politics, I, I kind of follow the artists and then I look and see what they're doing. And then I, I feel like we're doing this for good. We're doing this together and this is happening for good and positive change. Awesome, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Joseph, uh, 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 if I'm not mistaken, I think you probably don't, you don't spend a lot of time on social media if I remember correctly, uh, but what's, uh, what are you following? What do you, what's, what's catching your attention? Oh, I think you're muted there, Joseph. There you go. What can I say? Let's see. Netflix, Crave, SAS, yeah. Super Chat. <laughs> There's uh, I've been watching documentaries. I do some just checking in on social network. There's a few people that I stay in touch with that are that are uh, to me more conscious of what's happening with this COVID-19 situation. So I check in with every Thursday at seven o'clock, not every Thursday, but uh, with Derek White, Sky Cloud, who's an old friend from Vancouver. So I check in with him, he does readings and he also just give, gives a, an update on the situation. He is actually, uh, this is not an ad or anything or promo, but when he was, uh, he, he had COVID before COVID was, like uh, really rampant, it, like sometime in December. And he intuited what he had to do. So it, the, the mixture was a kombucha mixture. So he, he was, he got a kombucha and that's actually what helped him through that. Nothing else could help him at the time. And that's what he used. So, and then he, you know, he posts on Facebook, you know, healing modalities and anything to do with COVID. And now he's a threat to Facebook. They don't, they're trying to get, get rid of him. So he'll have to find another social network. But I do just check there to see how my family is doing. That's primarily, primarily why I go into Facebook and also Twitter, just to keep checking. I watch to see what kind of emotions people are going through. 
It's a very emotional time right now. And uh, I try not to spend too much time on the face. That's what we call it. Facebook. Mihkwagan is face and Masnehan is the book. So we were warned about that, you know, in the sweat lodge, not to go into it too too much. There's too much drama in there, you know, a lot of people, even a lot of people, you know, saying the three things that the people don't value sometimes is a spoken word. They just randomly just splatter their anger, their emotions, you know, on social network. It's just not really healthy. It's not good for them to do that. The same thing with, um, thinking right you gotta be careful how you think you can attract things you know by thinking or it could harm somebody and be careful where you walk so a lot of people are not really pay attention to these three simple teachings that i learned when i was in my 20s i'm reading a little bit you know um my i did a 12-day detox just so i've had time to do some uh, self nourish nurturing and self uh healing you could say and just uh Time for myself. I've been reading, I've been following. I haven't read this one yet, but this might be important to read, you know. <laughs> I haven't read it yet, but I'm planning to read it. I got it as a sale. And so this one is very interesting. I started reading this one here too. So I've been reading some stuff, you know. This is a very interesting one. It might be overdue on this one. Or maybe it's just, <laughs> it just, it's a very interesting journey because he talks about his life when suddenly he was uh, having these serious mental, you know, issues and problems. So he started to travel, went to India, he went to all these gurus. And uh, one of the gurus finally told him, you know, go back to your mother, go back to your father. And that kind of pissed him off. And so, uh, but he, being a medit in meditation, he listened to what the guru said, and then he realized a lot of the stuff that's related to what he was going through was coming from his own family background, his, his own family. He hadn't resolved those things. So that's really interesting because I'm always dealing with stuff, my stuff. I, at six to seven, I still deal with a lot of stuff that has to do with the abuse, you know, of the, from the residential school. So I'm always trying to find some ways to, uh, to get insight or to, uh, or to get some answer to what what the heck happened, you know, when I was five or six. And I wrote a song, because there's some, some things you have to just use art or theater to uh, work through. So I've been doing that, um, but mostly I've been doing a lot of self-care. And I've been reading this lady too, you know, Sarah Wilson. She's very interesting. That's a very interesting read. She's very random in her writing and speaking and the way she, re you know, the way, it's like this poor lady, you know, she suffers so much, you know, but uh, she, uh, like, she would take off for months or years, you know, just by herself, just to look, <laughs> find out what, what the hell was wrong with her. And uh, she writes about it, and she really gives some really beautiful gems of knowledge and information about health modalities and you know, just he healing. And I bought this at a grad sale. I thought it might inspire me to read more, you know, it's like this one here. I guess I better get better out. Get reading. Yeah, I better get. There's <laughs> a lot of books to read. <laughs> but that's the uh, our community is uh, COVID ready. Was COVID ready? Because we're lodge keepers. You know, we're spiritual um, connect. You know, there's a spiritual connection that we have that's not necessarily from the churches or the religions that try to indoctrinate us so we still have that ability to communicate to spirit and get information to help us so we have medicines that can help people you know if they choose to our community they sent me a, a, some medicine to boil and said to drink that that's your medicine for this COVID this is COVID medicine and uh, what I'm reading lately uh, on social network and Facebook is uh, you have to really be careful with what they're doing in the uh, immunization, you know, healing, whatever, you know, the chemicals they're putting in there are very dangerous. 
So you have to be careful to find out because they're not researching animals. Apparently, they're not tested on animals. They're just giving it to humans. And a lot of human beings have tested and volunteered openly to try this without even knowing, you know, what's, what's in there. They're crazy. They're insane. You know, we don't do that. You know, we, we check what it is that people need and it's prescribed specifically for whatever you're experiencing. So we never just randomly give people, you know, sweetgrass here this will take care of you know we don't do that we just make sure we everybody gets the right remedy right now it's medicine picking time so it's a real challenge to not be too much on zoom or too much on television social media it's a real challenge because the summer goes fast you know the summer goes really fast and if you don't seize the moment you know carpe diem as they say if you don't seize the day, you're not going to pick your medicine and you're going to be compromised next winter all throughout in terms of medicine. So you can't help yourself or you can't help others if there's third wave. So that's, you know, those are things that I go through and, you know, think about, you know, and I really have to push myself because I'm getting older. You know, I used to be just more conscientious when I was younger, enthusiastic to get out there, bang, get out to medicine picking. But uh, I'm getting a little lazy, you know, because all of a sudden I turn the television on. There's a good program on, you know. <laughs> you know how that goes. So that's a little of what I'm doing. And I'm trying to eat healthy that's ever since I detox. So I'm trying to really watch what I put into this body so I can. I started writing a bit, you know. I wrote, a, I wrote about my first kiss. It'll be in the movies next year, so. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, in a nutshell, that's what I'm doing right now. So we're doing quite a bit of writing and medicine picking right now. Awesome, thanks. That's great, everybody. And and Joseph, while we've got uh, uh, everybody on the video camera here too, I, uh, um, I, I wanna give a huge thank you to all the work that you've been doing with Shakespeare over the last couple of years. Sure. It, um, uh, it's for me personally and for the company in, in Incredibly, incredibly important, um, uh, and we've we've learned a lot. Uh, we've for, we, we've designed this beautiful contemplate, contemplation circle that we're about to start building, um, and uh, and various other conversations. And um, just a, a real personal thank you for that. I, I, I really appreciate the. Oh, you guys are great to work with. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. And and onward from there, we've got some more fun to have. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm curious with the next question, and I think we are, uh, we're probably are getting close to our half hour, but I really want to hear folks' thoughts on this. So, um, uh, and, and it's, it's just about, and we can wrap up with this question maybe of where, where do you hope today's time uh, takes theater in the future or arts in general? And, you know, I, I think a lot about, um, We've got this, you know, the great pause or uh, Renalta, you had some great language earlier on to describe the, you know, the consideration position that we're in where we actually get to think a bit more. Um, there's a lot of call outs happening uh, quite openly and publicly and there's a lot more people engaging in the priority conversation about systemic racism and oppression and white supremacy in our organizations and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, I, I'd love to hear from anybody where where they hope we go from here, where where they hope uh, things uh, occur. You know, do we hope that we're going to burn these institutions from the ground and rebuild something else? Do we do we hope that the art that we're going to do is going to be different? Do we hope that the way we're going to do it is going to be different? Do we hope that the power in our organizations is going to be different? You know, what's where are you hoping we go from here? Colin looks like he's chomping at the bit. He's got one there. He's, he's, he's ready. He's ready. Go, Colin, go. <laughs> I wrote a whole thing yesterday about August. Um, awesome. Yeah, I'll go if that's okay. Um, so, okay. I hope we realize that we are workers. I think a lot of theater people believe in exceptionalism about our actions. Um, that damage, abuse, and microaggressions can be justified through the process or are somehow worth it um, for rigorous artistic excellence. I think this is bullshit. Um, we are in a workplace. The rehearsal hall, the audition room, all of these things are a workplace. So like safety is, is, is paramount and say, racism is a workplace issue. Like racism is a, a workers rights issue. So actors, I think actors in theater people kind of get caught up in, but the art and I'm like, mm, that doesn't really matter. 
racism is a workplace issue. Um, we are in a workplace. I hope these discussions will make people actually realize that there are millions of dollars in theater, but the majority of them are allocated in very specific ways for buildings and big salaries and infrastructure. Um, some ADs in the country are paid almost as much as WANDAC receives in operating funds from the Canada Council for our entire year. Um, so some companies, one person is making more than we get to run our whole theater. So again, there's money in theater, it's just allocated a certain way. Um, I hope people realize that a theater built on private donations, corporate sponsorships, and audiences maintaining certain incomes, I hope they realize that that will always be exclusive, racist, and inaccessible. I do not believe that theaters will ever be able to achieve the actions required for decolonial and anti-oppression work due to their reliance on the extraction industry sponsors, upper class donors, and paywalls, which are tickets, tickets are paywalls, to maintain a strictly middle upper class white audience. We've seen this from COVID, we were redlining at the best of times, and now many theaters are shattered without their private, corporate, and upper-class sponsorship. Um, their operating grants barely cover their top three salaries and their rent. They cannot afford to do theater without a strong oil and gas industry, without audiences who are making enough to pay for those high ticket prices. I hope we realize this path was a mistake, in my opinion. I hope many theaters are able to navigate away from this addiction to wealth, glamour, and class. I truly hope that theaters are able to do that because I love theater. Um, personally, we are budgeting for zero ticket sales and zero donations, um, private or public, due to the economic devastation that is being wrought on the North. Um, however, they still deserve access to art, so we're making it free. Um, Meanwhile, many theaters across the country are hatching schemes to create paywalls for their digital art, as if internet access to technology and ability to engage with digital art is not a barrier enough. Like, it's huge. That's a huge barrier, and we just keep piling more on because we're addicted to capitalism. Truly, I hope we realize we have made mistakes, that we are part of the labor movement, and that capitalists have poisoned our art form through their promise of indefinite support, infinite growth, and imperialist metrics of success. I hope instead of salvaging that stinking, rotting ship, we light our fires for warmth and discover what could be, what could theater be, beyond tradition, beyond entertainment, and beyond high production value. Like, what can we be? We're there. The fires are burning, the places are collapsing. I hope we imagine what we can be instead of what we are or what we were. Colin, you're amazing. <laughs> Colin, I, I love, I mean, your, your thought is brilliant. Your, your, the breadth of things that you're keeping in your mind is huge and um, you're amazing. Um, and, and I, and, and I, I can't wait to see where the world goes with, with ADs like you stepping up uh, and, and I, and I hope that I or we or whatever can do something to, help you keep that energy because uh because you're brilliant thank you uh Rinalda? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're brilliant as well um, oh yeah i don't know oh that was incredible that was incredible uh where am i in the hope what do i hope i think i'm a, I'm a bit more I'm a bit more in the world of how are we taking this time to connect to who we really are and where we and where we really are. And so I'm, yes, you know, um, you know, BAM Center is one of the hats that I wear. And right now they're asking themselves all of those questions for all of the reasons, um, not even all, maybe five of the reasons that Colin <laughs> mentioned, right, is that relevancy. and. And so I see it as like, this is a huge opportunity to start helping change some of those minds within the system, but it comes with a huge cost. And that's that heavy lifting that, you know, thankfully we're not really doing right now, but you know, we are asked to do that heavy lifting often and often at no support and no consideration and mental wellness as well as physical wellness. So, a lot of the conversations I've been part of are in those conversations of what what's it going to be like and for acting theater um, we're pretty lucky that we are a project-based company so we don't have the financial obligations to, of sustaining staff um, 
Talis and I and Barry Belinsky are the staff and we don't get paid when we're not doing work. And um, we've postponed our season. Uh, we've postponed Powagan, um, Macbeth to tour the North, Northwest Territories when it's healthy to do that. And thankfully our funders have allowed us to kind of just keep that money so that we can do that when it's safe to. So I think because of that, we have a, that sense of longevity and I feel uh, really empathetic for the companies that rely on, on like their own salaries to be able to be consistent so that art can be created. And I, and I don't know the answer for what is the best way to do that. The only reason why I can afford um, Act Pick to be project is because I, I hustle pretty hard as a self-employed artist. So I always have little bits of income coming in and then with BAM Center, it, you know, that, that, um, that is really helpful. And I'm really grateful because very many people lost their jobs during this time. And we've done things online and I don't think that online is the answer but we've done the Canada Performs. So Powagin did Canada Performs, and now we're gonna be part of this online for the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. And then um, I'll be working with Azimuth Theatre in Edmonton in August to do an online on-site uh, production of All That Binds Us, which is a new work that we did as a collective. And if a second wave comes, then we're just gonna go all online. And some of the conversation is what is the healthy ways to do that? So I guess what I'm trying to compartmentalize or feel is that I will always do work. I will always create work because that is just who I am. I am a creator, I'm a creative, and I will keep doing what I'm doing no matter, no matter what, and I will adapt to whatever's easy whatever is needs is the necessity to be able to create and express that art and so i i feel like i'm still going strong but i think i would go strong if i didn't have bam center i would be going strong if i was in a little community with no internet <laughs> i would be going strong anyway and um and so i think one thing that I'm grateful for and that I'm why I probably focus on the artists on social media is that we have the resiliency and no matter what happens, if the buildings crumble, if nobody gets any more money, we are still here because we are the voice and we are the rejuvenators. Every time you put an artist in a community that's dead, it thrives. Like a pharaoh, like Pharaoh Yukon is, uh, was a mining town that was only existed for mining. When the mining ended, it was dead. Artists were buying houses for like, you know, minuscule thousands of dollars. And now it's an incredible artist colony area. And we find those places and we, and we bring them back to life. So we, we're just gonna be here. And no matter what, we'll always, we'll always bring it to life. Fantastic. We will always be here and we will always bring it to life. I love it. That's wonderful. Joseph, uh, what's, uh, what's the hope for you of where we, uh, where we head from here? Oh, I think you're muted again, Joseph. You're censoring yourself. You didn't hear me swearing. So that's... <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, well, as an actor, whether it's theater or filmmaking, I haven't done much of that, you know, but I was, uh, I was rethinking what would I do next, you know, and uh, the things that are happening right now, for example, uh, you know, Jared Martin, right, who does, uh, what is it called? Uh, I forget what he calls it, but it's an indigenous, indigenous program on CBC resilience or something. I can't, no, I can't think of it right now, but uh, he, uh, He's playing, he had a powwow kind of evening, powwow hour, you know, it's like, a, so as when you're an artist, an actor, you know, you find every opportunity. So what I did was I just pulled off the road and I just got a big feather, eagle feather, you know, and I just start, kind of start dancing to a, a couple of songs that he was playing. When, when one was a, 
when it was a jingle dress dance, but it was, you know, the jingle dress dance has a very fast, one in particular song has a very fast beat, so you have to, but I just went half speed because I'm not going full speed anymore. So I just went half speed, you know, just did a dance, you know, in the sunset. So I find opportunities, you know, so I'm just, I recorded myself on my on my little good old phone here, the little cell phone. And then I uh, did a powwow, a little powwow dance, you know, and this, it's a way, I guess, to show people, you know, that we still have beauty out there on the land. I think it's just a way also to remind people, you know, just get out on the land, you know, theater can happen anytime, anywhere, you know, wherever you are. And you, you can't just restrict it, you know, because the things are shut down. It's a really good time to be contemplating. You know, with working on that contemplative site there, you know, well, it's a, it's a metaphor to what's going through, what's happening right now. People are really going inside deeply. So we're getting, dealing with some really tough emotions, you know, and you can see this coming out in, in social media and it's coming out in Tristan DeRocher's walk, right? And then he's causing, you know, he's, he's really pushing, pushing the uh, bar, you know, in terms of uh, what is political and what is artistic. You know, he's a phenomenal fiddle player, you know, and I really like what he does as a poet and a fiddle, you know, but to mix politics is, is a little tricky, you know, it's a little tricky and to say tastefully, you know, the best way that we do it is through what we do as artists, you know, as, as a theater people, as actors. That's our best expression. That's, that's the strongest. You don't need to be ranting, you know, out there about Trump or anybody that's, you know, they're, they're just, they're bringing out the, you could say they're bringing out the poison in society. They're, that's, that's the highest compliment I could give them because they're, that's what they're doing. They're, they're healing in a way, in some ways, through their backwardness. They're healing people. People have to deal with these strong emotions, but they can't be, you know, driven by them. They can't depend on that to, to express, right? They, they just have to understand, you know, that uh, their buttons are being pushed and use that for your, you know, your songwriting, your dancing, you know, your, your, monologue or your comedic you know comedic moment so i mean i've been thinking that way so i always try to find ways i think the uh, time that we're going through it's a very sensitive time so how you respond whether it's on social media or with people out there on the street will either move things you know in a positive light it'll it'll move theater in in a you know, towards what needs to happen, right? You know, whatever productions need to be, to be created are better, you know, pushed from contemplation and also, you know, just deep, you know, intuitive kind of recent, um, silent uh, moments, you know, wherever you are, whether it's in your apartment or if you're out there in the land, you know, or they are walking, that's what needs to happen. You know, we, we can't, we can't, be uh, angry. We can't, uh, or else use the anger. Use that strong aggression, you know, towards your art practice. I've always tried to do that, you know, because I've been here long enough to recognize that, uh, yeah, I am. A, I have other things to do. I don't need to be caught up, you know, in all the other drama or trauma. Right? Don't traumatize anybody. You know, just be who, what, whatever you were gifted to do. Still do ceremony. Go to the lodge, you know, go out there and put tobacco on the land. Go out there and dance, you know. That's what's important to me. That's what's really important. We were told always to stay close to the land and then also honor the land and just keep them ancestry, ancestors um, connected to us. Keep that connection. You know, it's, it's all this other stuff, you know, is... Uh, it's going to happen anyway, you know, it's going to happen. I had a really interesting uh, feeling. I don't know if it was a dream or if it's just something. I just woke up in the moment uh, of uh, clarity where I I could see almost that things were kind of returned, going to return almost to normal, at least to some some state. But I don't know when. There was no date or nothing. So that was the last, uh, kind of like the last just little bit of, you know, bead of spiritual wisdom that came from the other side and it just was there it's just like a little bead and i don't know whether i dreamt it or whether i it was just in my as i'm traveling in my vehicle you know and all of a sudden there it was 
So I'm, I'm not even sure. But that's, uh, I just keep in touch with people on social media that are in the arts. I, I do keep in touch with people like that and try to maintain that circle. It's our strength as artists is within maintaining relationship as artists, as people that are involved in theater and uh, singing and storytelling and dancing. So that's our strength, you know? So go from the place of strength, you know, not from the place of, uh, of uh, social media where there's a lot of uh, difficult stories, you know? Those, are, those people need to use that, that uh, they have to be resilient, right? They have to come out of that and surrender and say, oh, this is why I'm experiencing these emotions, you know, but I can use it towards my own artistic endeavor and all that. So that's sort of, sort of how I, th I see things right now. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Joseph. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Rodrigo, uh, you want to uh, want to close us off on this one with... Oh my God. Tell us we should burn it down and, and uh, we're going to end on, on the high note. <laughs> you guys are all amazing. Everything you've all said, it's, it's just beautiful and completely um, thoughtful. And um, I'm, hoping, um, I'm hoping for a kinder, gentler culture. I'm hoping for, I'm hoping that we collaborate more across disciplines and don't get so stuck in our little, you know, specific practices, whatever that is. Uh, I think competition, you know, as, as Colin was saying, it, it is the thing that, that feeds capitalism. And I don't know, we, we don't have to be this competitive. We don't have to move at this pace that we were before. You know, we were just feeding into it and, and the system was running itself and it was relentless. Um, I've been thinking a lot about, I hope, I had a, I had a daughter six weeks ago um, and uh, it's been uh, fascinating to um, go through this process with a newborn. And my first, my first uh, child, my boy, was born four years ago, and he was born two weeks before I began my first season at Stratford. And both with Zeke, my boy, and my daughter, Indira, it's shocking how it seems we've designed this theater life to be incompatible to family life. And I don't know what that is. Why is that? Why is it so ruthless, so cutthroat, this business of having to do more, to produce more, to, 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 to just prove ourselves somehow? And I, I, that needs to end. I'm hoping that ends. I'm hoping that when we come out of this, whatever coming out of this is, there it is, children. Um, I'm hoping we find a way that is gentler and kinder. I hope that we, we do less product so we can connect more like we're doing right now. So we can have regular check-ins either via Zoom or phone calls or cross collaboration and, and co-productions across the country. I hope we can have more money to, to, so that allocated to development that doesn't necessarily lead to pr production, whatever the fuck that means, you know, so that we can actually just explore and connect and, 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 and across cultures and across uh, 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 forms. Um, I'm thinking a lot about the education that got me here, my training, and how so much of that was based on trauma and, uh, and pushing and, and, and excavating some sense of shame and how I hope, I hope educational institutions are listening to this moment and talking. I hope we, we're due for a massive overhaul of how we train actors and theater makers we're due for a complete dismantling of, of our language when it comes to uh, teaching somebody how to be an actor uh, or a director or a designer. We are due for a complete revision of how we communicate uh, in our training systems. And I hope that our training uh, institutions will be kinder and gentler and more open to uh, not set in one way of doing things. Um, and I'm hoping that we as, as artists, you know, um, as theater makers, I'm hoping uh, we can lead folks back into this idea of congregating into spaces, into sharing. And I think, because I think we do have the skills as theater makers to um, um, highlight how important and vital that is to look at somebody in the eye and actually be in the same room together in a circle and 
discover something together about ourselves and the story we're trying to tell. Um, I hope the world listens to theater makers. I hope this idea of, you know, serving the market goes away so we can actually listen to <laughs> the artists in terms of connecting as human beings again. Because we can do that as theater makers. We can actually teach people how to come together and communicate as human beings across languages and across forms. So, and because we are resourceful, as we're not all saying, we're very resourceful people. We've been able to adapt somehow to this online sphere, which is antithetical to theater making in so many ways. It's so not what theater making is about. And yet, we've shaped it to something that's still unraveling and we're still discovering. And that says a lot about what we are as artists. So um, I'm, I'm hoping for all of that. I think that's, a, that's a, a, a great place to leave it. Thank you. Um, uh, it, except for maybe that, I think if, if I have one hope in this, it's that, uh, 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 and thanks for the note that Joseph just put in the chat of these conversations are great, which uh, my hope would be that over time, uh, I get to know you all better and uh, uh, get to share more of this uh, as we go. So I have a, a great respect for everybody on this call. and. Um, and, and, a, and a great respect in particular for the humanity that you all bring to the table, um, because I think a lot of what we do is based on, you know, trauma, as Rodrigo said, and, and the humanity is crucial. So um, thank you for, uh, for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you for being the, the thinkers and the creators and the leaders that you are in your community. And uh, for, for sharing that a bit with, uh, with myself and Shakespeare on Saskatchewan and this community. And uh, it's been nice to eat over digital distance and break some bread. <laughs> but uh, uh, next time you come through this territory, uh, uh, come to my house and I'll cook you a nice meal. I'd love to do that. Um, oh. So uh, thank you, everybody. Any, any final thoughts or anything that anybody wanted to toss out? I just wanted to offer to Rodrigo that I was a part of this online Shakespeare thing called the show must go online. And they're based out of the UK. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, and so I was like, Oh, yeah, Shakespeare, that one. And then, uh, so I just wanted to, that could probably be edited out, but I just wanted to offer that to you. Oh, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah, they, they're great. It's an international effort to really just read the plays and, and uh, yeah. It's been, it's been, it's, I'm doing a lot of like weekly uh, uh, um, uh, workshops on Zoom, just connecting with people like this and just talking about the practice with no goal, just to talk yeah. about what we do. And it's so soul nurturing to just connect and talk about why we do what we do and, and learning so much from, from, from you guys. So it's been a time, it's been a time. <laughs> Well, thanks so much, everybody. I think we'll uh, we'll sign off at that point. And uh, much love sending out uh, across the country your ways. And uh, I look forward when we can see uh, eye to eye in person. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Have a great Masucho. one. Yeah, Quinnick. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Have a good evening. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your soup, whatever. Good to see you there, Colin. Good to see you all. See ya. Thanks so much. Take care.